And we talk in truth here today. It's feeding yourself the proper food and it's getting sunlight, which they've told you causes cancer. It's going out and stepping out in the grass in your bare feet, which nobody does anymore in this modern society. But you know, the suicide rates are off the charts and it's maybe because you haven't actually taken a deep breath outside in two years, yeah. three years or more. I became a nurse and I specialize in labor and delivery. So this is an area of the medical field that we deal with healthy people. You know, we joke that we don't take care of sick people. Yeah. We know how to do that. So don't know how to deal with man, don't know how to deal with sick people. <laughs> so through that, you know, I had such a heart of service and wanting to make a difference and helping people have a healthy baby and stay. And I just saw over and over medical abuse. Mm. where doctors did not have the patient's best interest in mind. It was about their convenience. Yeah. And so I was really disillusioned with the medical system already. And then I had children and became a patient and got to experience it from the patient side, which is really hard because you know, like and these were people that I worked with taking care of me. And I'm not saying that they did anything specifically wrong, but especially my third child, I went without an epidural. I was not listened to. N not at all and it was an abuse and it was a um, a violation you know I didn't consent to things that were forced upon me and um, it was pretty traumatic unfortunately so then COVID happened uh, where do I start I was not on this way of eating April I think was probably dabbling with keto at the time yeah um, I was on the autoimmune protocol okay. when it started, and then I found that. And that was, like, that was like the lion diet, -ish, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. So I thought she was crazy. Well, <laughs> With I the same be. level of crazy that she always <laughs> been. You know, she's always just been, like, well, interested in doing anything. She didn't write anything off. She would always give something a try, give it a chance, hear people out. Um, so I was just like, okay, well, I'm definitely not doing that diet. <laughs> but at the time, I was in nursing still, and I just was watching COVID-19 unfold and sweep across the world and see how our government and our medical establishment handled COVID-19. That was, the word at that time was unprecedented. Mm -hmm. But for me, it was unprecedented failure. They broke every rule they taught us in, yeah. in nursing school. I'm like, nurses and doctors, like, does this not, raise some red flags <laughs> right. like oh this is a new illness let's just scrap everything we've ever done mm -hmm. and just go back to the drawing board we're gonna start square one and we're gonna do stuff we know doesn't work and see if it works this time you just hope it didn't work during the black death but let's let's bring it back let's try <laughs> so i lost all faith in the medical system and so when that's your career it's rough. It's heartbreaking because I know the bones were good. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of medical understanding, a lot of good that has come before us to set the stage. We've gone very, very, very awry. It's feeding yourself the proper food and it's getting sunlight, which they've told you causes cancer. It's going out and stepping out in the grass in your bare feet, which nobody does anymore in this modern society. Yeah. But you know, the suicide rates are off the charts and it's maybe because you haven't actually taken a deep breath outside in two years, yeah. three years or yeah. more. And I remember the very beginning of COVID when I was still a believer, uh, you know, at one point I was like, I believe in the medical system. I believe in vaccinations. I believe in everything the medical community is doing. So I was still a believer in what the news was telling us at this point early in 2020. And they were saying, well, we've seen early on that people who are exercising, who are getting sunlight and who aren't diabetic, aren't dying from COVID as bad. Mm -hmm. Now you have to search way back in the archives if they haven't erased it yet, but they did say yes. that on, on the news. And I was like, whoa, I haven't exercised in like a long time, <laughs> years um, at that point. So I was like full on mother career situation, not exercising. My weight was still about the same. Yeah. Um, Lucky. Less yeah. muscle tone for sure, but uh, who knows what my metabolic state was. Yeah, true. But uh, so I was like, okay, well, I don't want to die from COVID. So let me go, go outside, get some sunlight, go for a walk. Mm -hmm. I started walking and then adding jogging in there and just 
it's, you know, spread into a whole bunch of other things. And I've discovered I really, really enjoy physical activity and getting stronger and being a good steward of my body. And, you know, with the Christian aspect, I think that's biblical for sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, our body is a temple and I feel like we need to keep all of this modern man-made crap out of our temple. I'm starting to be more convicted about alcohol. And it's, and it's just funny because the science and the literature is all starting to line up with that. So it's right. just like, okay, can we just believe God for what he says, live the lifestyle that he's given us? And honestly, like rejecting a lot of modern dogma advancements, mm-hmm. you know? I really think that we're going to look back at, you know, maybe the last 50 years, 50 to 100 years, and call it the new dark ages of medical science. Because truly... You're right. They went back on everything we knew. Like, we don't quarantine the sick with the healthy. We learned that a long time ago. Like, hundreds and hundreds of years ago. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, in 2020, that didn't count anymore. Yeah. Masks are only efficient in a clinical clinical setting with people who have been properly trained with their use. Not any Joe Blow on the street, you know, picking up trash, then eating a corn dog, you know. It, It was ridiculous what was recommended. Yeah, there was a recommendation with no education. Exactly. Which is the main problem. Or evidence. And like in the hospital, what we've been trained for decades is that depending on what illness they have and how it's spread, that's how you know how to mask. Mm -hmm. So like a patient with the flu would be under droplet precautions. They wear a mask when they're in the hallway to to hopefully decrease the spread, but it doesn't prevent the spread. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I digress. There are there are rationales and reasons in instances where those things are called for, not a blanket statement like, hey, why don't you just put your dirty panties on your face and walk out to the, the grocery store and, you know, that'll save you from COVID. People were using all kinds of stuff. All kinds of stuff. I was using a lace when yeah. Costco made us wear a mask or it was a face covering. So it was like, fine. It was hilarious. It was great. It's been a rebel. I was <laughs> yeah. not quite that way. I was like, if you all, all you scare people want me to wear a mask, sure. I wear a mask all the time at work. It doesn't really bother me. It bothered the crap out of me. It, I didn't like I it. did not think that it was a, a beneficial evidence-based practice. Mm-hmm. Using a lot of nursing jargon, if you're not familiar. That's what got me more open to preventing. And preventing illness and like that was that was my heart when I got a health degree was to help people prevent diseases to to take your personal you know history like you know predisposing predisposing factors that might cause you to have Alzheimer's for example Mm -hmm. um, or diabetes or whatever and help you target those with healthy lifestyles that would either prevent the illness altogether or at least delay its onset you know that that kind of thing and now I'm back to that point where I'm like okay well modern medicine has failed so let's try not to get sick let's get the information out to as many people as we can on on how to stay healthy and guess what it's get back to nature yeah it's mental health and all of that is found in the bible Mm -hmm. the mental health aspect how to keep your body healthy and strong don't be lazy work hard keep your temple clean don't put impurities into it And as soon as you find out about an impurity like BPA and all the plastics and pesticides and how they're actually changing your hormones, Mm -hmm. once you get convicted of that and you have that knowledge, then you need to listen. Yeah. Make changes. And do your best and make changes. Back to my personal history and story. Herstory. Herstory. So I remember not dieting. I think I was working out. Was it? When did you get sick? 2019. 19. I yeah. wasn't even working out. October 2019. I was, this is before me. Really? The COVID intervention in my life. Yeah. See, for, from my memory, you've always worked out. Like, you've always done that. But No, I remember after my middle daughter and I went to my OB and they were like, okay, so you're working out 30 minutes, like three times a week. And I was like, <laughs> no, I wasn't doing anything. Oh, all right. But I've just gotten so like into it now yeah. that it seems like it's been that way forever. But. It's just a part of you. Yeah, it is now. Mm-hmm. I mean, I used to like working out, but there was a period where I wasn't doing nothing. Yeah. And I was like, my body didn't really change all that much. And even now with all that I'm doing, <clears throat> it's not drastic. Yeah. I see little things. I'm like, okay, that's nice. Um, but if I could just, you know, hold back the, the wrinkles and the sagging and the weakness, I'm happy. So it's not about like me getting to a certain point. It's just me 
staying strong and not aging poorly. But anyway, 2019, my sister had come to help me with my children while I was working and we gave her this lovely virus um, that caused the backdoor trots, as Dr. Mm -hmm. Barry would say, mm -hmm. for weeks. It was more than one week, right before her trip to Scotland. And right after she got over the, the squirty booties, <laughs> Then she got inflamed. She real, got real this bad. weird autoimmune inflammation, and it was debilitating. She couldn't get out of bed, mm -hmm. and it lasted. I mean, it ruined her trip to Scotland. She got back home, and she would have flares to, that were debilitating. And then that last flare up that you had where you couldn't walk, it was my, right after my last kid was born. Mm -hmm. And we did Thanksgiving, so it's coming on two years. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I watched her suffer, and doctors had no answers. There's so many autoimmune disease popping up that they're like, what's the point of giving it a name? We all know it's autoimmune, but we don't know what flavor. Yeah. Good luck with that. Right. Here's an immune suppressant. <laughs> so then she's like, I'm doing this elimination diet. I'm, I'm going to figure out what's wrong with this. And I was like, okay, crazy. And it worked. Within like two weeks, it worked. It worked. And I could stand up and walk. So I was like, well, hold up now. There might be something to this. Mm -hmm. And then she started losing weight and she could walk mm -hmm. and she wasn't in so much pain. And so I was like, oh, well. And then she got turned on to Dr. Barry. And so I started watching Dr. Barry and I was like, <laughs> I remember sitting in my health education classes and I remember sitting in my nursing classes and they're like, yes, you get diabetes, type two diabetes. You don't produce enough insulin so therefore just will shoot you up with insulin and you can have as many carbohydrates as you want and then as a nurse seeing the trash they feed people in the hospital like you a diabetic and you get an ice cream right now mm -hmm. orange got juice a muffin orange juice cereal oatmeal ice cream with breakfast they just order what they want in the hospital and then they're like okay i had 500 carbohydrates with this meal could you please give me an entirely deadly amount of insulin and i'm like <laughs> and let me tell you taking care of a pregnant woman who is super morbidly obese is incredibly difficult I'm like, I, oh, I know imagine. there's a baby in here somewhere <laughs> could you hold that flap for me please oh that visual it's not sweet to say but it's the truth yeah and we talk in truth here today <laughs> back to your story so she got well and she started losing weight and she showed me dr barry and dr barry was like hey maybe if you stop eating the carbs you'll stop having the high blood sugars and stop having to take so much insulin and maybe you could heal just the fact that i had no idea until i started listening to dr jason bug and dr barry that insulin was a growth hormone and that's why People who are prone to type 2 diabetes or pre-diabetes have acanthosis nigricans, which is an overgrowth of like melanocytes in your creases um, and skin tags and foot fungus and funky toes and yeast infections. And I mean, it's well known that when you have high blood sugar and you get an infection, it's just like a feasting ground. So anyway, everything that Dr. Barry said made sense and he backed it up with research. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the unfortunate truth is that there's no money to be made in a proper human diet. So there's not a lot right. of research to the level that people want to prove their claims. Like, what is it? The double blind controlled trials. Like, mm -hmm. But none of their recommendations have double blind controlled trials either or any trial of any kind to see if their food pyramid or their new food recommendations actually help anyone short term or long term. They just make the suggestion, say, take it, don't think about it. Well, just it's the same it. thing with, you know, when COVID happened, they just got a bunch of experts in the room and asked them their opinion. And now we're going to go like, that's the Bible. Mm -hmm. Same thing with our food. Yeah. Our food recommendations. Science is not unbiased. It's yeah. not. And science is never settled. If that's the true. science is settled, it's not science. It's dogma. There's always more questions to be answered. Absolutely. More things, more things to know. I mean, there was a time when everyone thought that the sun rotated around the earth. Yeah. You know, that was standard scientific practice. And if you go against that, you're a heretic. And people lost their lives and freedom and stuff for telling the truth. Burned at the stake. Which 
hopefully we don't go that far, but we're going to tell the truth regardless of if I get shadow banned or anything like that. I don't care. I, we're just out here trying to tell the truth and help some people. So, hey, here's another video you might enjoy. And please don't forget to like this video, share it, and subscribe if you haven't already. Until next time, stay beautiful, friends.